Well, the election is over, and I think a lot of us are surprised at the results. And I wanted to offer some quick thoughts off the cuff and two takeaways from the election last night that we need to realize. First off, as I've said for weeks now, men were going to decide this election, and it is without question that they did. Initial numbers are showing that the women's vote was pretty much the same, maybe a little bit lower as it has been in the past few elections, both in the number of votes and how they broke out. Men, however, appear to have outperformed past elections, especially in the swing states. Even more interesting, though, is the breakdown of the male vote. The split was 54-44 in favor of Trump for the men, matching the 54-44 split of women in favor of Harris. But that doesn't tell the whole story. More telling is the makeup of that vote, with male black and Hispanic voters turning out for Trump in ways never seen before. Now, to be fair, these are preliminary numbers, but they are telling, and it leads to two primary takeaways that both parties need to heed. On the Democratic side, they need to take a step back and realize that putting their entire focus on women's issues and essentially having a war on men, blaming them for all of society's ills, is not working for them. While, yes, it has led to higher rates of women, especially white liberal women, voting for them in the past, it is now turning off the men, especially the minority men. And until and unless they decide to step back from that war on men and masculinity and acknowledge that men do indeed have issues, issues which they're not going to allow to be ignored anymore, well, I suspect the hemorrhaging of the male vote is only going to increase. On the Republican side, they need to realize and acknowledge that men largely handed them this election, at least at the national level. The Republicans need to see this for what it is. Men telling them, we're here and we're not going to be taken for granted anymore. Something the Republican Party has done for decades now. One masterful thing Trump did was to not ignore the male vote. Was to actually reach out and court it. In particular, the younger male vote. By not taking that vote for granted, those men showed up to support him in droves. If, however, the Republicans don't acknowledge that and put focus on addressing the issues and needs of men, that support will start eroding quickly and could easily disappear. Finally, for us men, this is just the first step. We spoke up. We have been heard. As I've posted before, both parties are wondering what the hell happened with men. What the hell woke them up? The answer, of course, is that men are sick and tired of being demonized tired of being taken for granted, and tired of their issues being ignored. But last night was just the first step. We men stepped up, flexed our muscle, and helped put those candidates into office. But unless we hold those candidates' feet to the fire, unless we make it loud and clear that we now expect action, not words, those politicians will quickly revert back to focusing on women and women's issues. As men, we need to start reaching out to the winning candidates of both parties and letting them know we are here and we expect results. And if we don't get them, then we'll be holding them accountable in the next election. It's that simple, gentlemen. So let's roll up our sleeves and get to work. Because in my 30 years of advocating on behalf of men and boys in the political realm, I have never, never seen an opportunity like this. Not even close.